Hey guys, it's Nerdgasm. Let's finally talk about Marvel's Avengers that came out early last month. Since its release, it seems to be getting very lukewarm responses from people, mixed reviews from many critics, and even some fans. I don't think it's catching on, as much as Crystal Dynamics, Square Enix, or Marvel and Disney for that matter thought it would, and with an IP like the Avengers, you'd think it'd be like printing money or something. How could you go wrong? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I think it's undeniable that this game failed to live up to expectations. It's not terrible, I've played a lot worse than it, and I will be getting to all the things I love about this game as we work our way through this video, don't you worry. But when everything was said and done, when all the dust settled with Marvel's Avengers, it left me feeling very unsatisfied. I wanted more, but this game, sadly, doesn't really deliver all that much in terms of content. Marvel's Avengers features a single player campaign, which can be played online co-op if that's something you're into, which can be a lot of fun. It tells an original story and draws inspiration from several elements and characters found within Marvel Comics. I enjoyed it quite a bit. However, once the main campaign is finished, there is no option to replay missions, no New Game Plus of any kind, no separate save files, nothing. The only way to play the main narrative again, at least as of right now, is to delete your entire save file and start from scratch, which is just painful. The game's focus is clearly on its multiplayer component, playing with friends or randoms from around the world to take on various challenges as a team of superheroes. Also, its RPG elements, surrounding its use of skill trees, equipable and upgradable gear, and unlockable costumes, which are obtained by completing challenges, or spending real-world money on top of whatever you forked over to get this game in the first place. You know how it is. To unlock everything in Marvel's Avengers, you will need to either spend lots of money or a disgustingly large amount of hours playing it, and in its current state, with the lack of multiple save files or a New Game Plus option, to replay the campaign with everything you've acquired on harder difficulties and whatnot, there isn't much incentive for me to do any of the extra stuff. It feels like a big waste of time. Why bother collecting any of it if you can't keep it when you want to play the story again, having to delete your entire save? It doesn't make any sense. Now mind you, Crystal Dynamics might remedy all of this with a simple patch, add in New Game Plus to allow you to make separate save files and carry over some of the costumes, kind of like the Batman Arkham games did. But as of right now, as I'm recording this, none of that has happened. The replay value of this game feels very shallow. I think if they don't fix any of this, and soon, players are going to move on from this game very quickly. It's not going to have much of a shelf life, and that's a damn shame. In many ways, Marvel's Avengers feels rushed, unfinished. It doesn't have enough content to it, and honestly, I don't think it's worth buying new, unless some fixes can be made. I hope a patch does come out. I hope Crystal Dynamics can repair the damage some of this has caused to the overall outlook of this game, because there is still a lot to like about it, which I will get into. Maybe by the time this video comes out, something would have been done, or I would have needed to put text over top explaining some new development, and that I was wrong. Who knows? Maybe Marvel's Avengers is a lot better than it was at launch. This is my past self talking to my future self, praying that's the case. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this video that Marvel's Avengers didn't live up to expectations, but I should clarify that my own personal expectations for this game were rather low to begin with. I was excited for it, as I am with any superhero game that comes out, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't skeptical throughout its entire development. I didn't really know what this game wanted to be, or how it was going to be executed for that matter. I knew a fully open world Avengers game where you could play as multiple heroes was going to be out of the question. I knew it would be far more level based and linear, as opposed to something we had seen in the Batman Arkham franchise for example, with that much verticality. The Avengers game wasn't going to give you that much freedom, have that much scale and detail in its environments, because it simply couldn't, from a tech standpoint, not with these types of characters, or with this kind of gameplay. 
Marvel's Avengers plays a lot like those old-school beat-em-up games from the Super Nintendo era, just with better graphics. You battle a bunch of bad guys, take them out, move further into the level, take on a few more, confront the odd boss encounter here and there, rinse and repeat. It has that same sort of feel with its progression. In terms of the combat, it's nothing special, no different than what we've seen in other superhero games. You have light attacks, strong attacks, various super moves you can do called heroics, and even takedowns when your enemy is weak enough, like something right out of the Batman Arkham series. There are instances when the environment opens up a little, with boundaries of course, and you can fly around or explore on foot, which makes the game feel a bit more open world. But there isn't a whole lot to do outside the main story objectives. Maybe find a little loot, some new gear, save some trapped civilians surrounded by enemies, nothing too crazy. There are some cool environments in this game. Some look really gorgeous, spooky, and even vibrant, popping with color. But some other ones, mainly the interiors, look really bland and uninspired, lacking personality. Stuff we have seen far too often before in superhero games. Despite these issues, I think Crystal Dynamics did a pretty decent job with the levels and the environments. When they are good, they are really good. Some of the small city areas look amazing. I found myself taking my time in them and looking at all the little details. Though the multiplayer and RPG components in this game are hit and miss depending on who you ask, one thing is for certain, the main campaign is pretty damn good. If you haven't played it in its entirety before, stop this video right now, because I am going to spoil the shit out of it. You've been warned. The story begins on A-Day in San Francisco, where a giant celebration for the Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Superheroes, is taking place. The Avengers plan on unveiling their new headquarters and helicarrier, known as the Chimera, to the public when a terrorist attack is perpetrated by their old enemy, Taskmaster. The conflict results in the wide-scale destruction of San Francisco after the recently discovered Terrigen Crystal which powers the helicarrier is overloaded and destroyed, causing a huge explosion of Terrigen Mist to envelop the city. Anyone exposed to the mist are transformed through the process of terrigenesis into super-powered beings, labeled Inhumans. Captain America is also presumed dead due to his unsuccessful attempt at preventing the blast. The Avengers are blamed for the tragedy due to the Terrigen Crystal being their technology, which had not been fully tested yet prior to the event, and are forced to disband. Five years later, when the bulk of the game takes place, superheroes have become outlawed, and Inhumans alienated from the rest of society. Many are imprisoned, beaten, or even killed. It's not a pretty sight, a very depressing and gloomy reality you find yourself in. The narrative centers primarily around Kamala Khan, a superhero and Avengers superfan who was present at the A-Day celebration when she was a child. She wanted to be just like them, and from the very start, her good-hearted nature, strength, and passion are at the forefront. She's a very likable character you can get behind. She becomes an Inhuman as a result of the Terrigen Mist, able to polymorph and transform her body at will. In secret, she trains to become a superhero, and after uncovering evidence behind what really happened on A-Day, sets the events of this story in motion. Kamala finds and reconnects the broken link between the Avengers, picking up the pieces, brushing everyone off, and reassembling the team, feeling superheroes are needed now more than ever. As the story progresses, you locate and recruit each Avenger who has lost their way, and it's up to Kamala to bring them back and realign their motivations and purpose as heroes. Following their disbanding and the outlawing of superheroes, the Avengers no longer get along, especially in the case of Bruce Banner and Tony Stark, who put blame on one another for what happened on A-Day. Despite her age and inexperience as a hero, Kamala becomes the shoulder the team leans on during this dark and hopeless time. She is their coach, their motivator, and at one point gives them a pep talk which even Captain America himself would shed a tear at. It's easily the most powerful moment in the game. I really enjoy the character of Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, 
Like I said, she is very likable, and as fans, we know exactly where she is coming from with a lot of this stuff. We hang on every word she says because it's what we ourselves are thinking, seeing our beloved heroes in the state they are in. What they did with Kamala Khan in this game, it's definitely the best aspect of the story, at least in my opinion. Okay, so let's talk about this game's primary antagonist, the main reason I wanted this game in the first place. I was curious to see what Crystal Dynamics was going to do with the character of Modok. If you've seen my supervillain breakdown of him, you would know that I feel this character is heavily underrated, and in a lot of media outside of comics, especially video games, I feel he's been misused. He's usually played for laughs, which I get, he looks a bit silly, big head, little body, but I'm glad Square Enix took the time to really flesh out their own version of him, take him in a very serious direction, and for the most part, I think it works. George Tarleton was the scientist who discovered the Terrigen Crystal that would be used to power the Chimera Helicarrier. On A-Day, he was one of the victims of the Terrigen Mist and went through Terrigenesis, developing technokinetic powers, that is, the ability to control and manipulate technology with his mind. His head would enlarge, and he would hide it from the public, becoming more and more mutated as the game goes on. In the wake of A-Day, the disbanding of the Avengers, and the criminalization of superheroes, Tarleton takes it upon himself to form the mega-corporation known as Advanced Idea Mechanics, or AIM for short, that intends on purging the world of not only Inhumans, but all those that possess superpowers on Earth, even himself, if need be. Tarleton feels that he has become a freak, and blames the Avengers and superpowers in general for what had happened to him. He works alongside geneticist Monica Rappaccini to experiment on Inhumans and find a possible cure for their so-called condition. It's revealed that she had been manipulating Tarleton's powers behind his back, using blood samples from Captain America, whom she had been keeping on ice in outer space. She's the reason his body has become so deformed, forcing him to use a mechanized chair to get around. Needless to say, he doesn't take it too well. Modok in this game is written pretty decent. I think the alterations they made to his character work within the confines of this story. You sympathize for him a bit once the true intentions of Monica are revealed. He was essentially a test subject for her this entire time, a puppet of sorts. I also think his motivations regarding the destruction of all superpowers is quite interesting, and strong enough to carry the game's narrative. That said, I don't think he's as strongly written as, say, Dr. Octopus was from Insomniac's Spider-Man game. MODOK is pretty good, but not great, and I think that has less to do with him specifically, and more to do with how this game is structured as a whole. Allow me to explain. Before I can though, I have to bring up Advanced Idea Mechanics, the other big reason I wanted to get this game. Much like MODOK, I felt they deserved some time in the spotlight, to show the mainstream what they could really do. AIM is essentially a villain in and of itself in Marvel's Avengers. It's its own character in many ways. The developers really gave this company personality, modeling the visuals and architecture off of a beehive, with lots of honeycomb shapes, emphasizing the idea of this hive mind mentality to them. Even the enemies and aim forces you go up against in the game have a very unique feel to them, because they are always changing, evolving in some way to take on the superpowered threats they face. As the game progresses, they get stronger and more equipped. It really feels like you are facing off against this artificial intelligence of sorts, learning off of you, and altering its strategy when necessary, like a big chess match or something. Of course, this obviously isn't the case, but the design of AIM, the visuals, the way they are implemented within the narrative, again, it almost becomes a character in and of itself. I hope all of that makes sense. AIM is one of the strongest aspects of this game in my opinion. The problem is, Crystal Dynamics leans a bit too heavily on them. They become a crutch in many ways. 
I've noticed a lot of reviewers say the combat of Marvel's Avengers is very repetitive and even a bit boring. While I agree it can be repetitive, I think saying it's downright boring or dull is a bit harsh. When you're playing as the likes of Hulk, Captain America, or Iron Man, it can be a hell of a good time, and each character does feel different from the other. But I think the fact that you're fighting AIM Robot after AIM Robot, or Adaptoid after Adaptoid, gets tiresome after a while. I know it did for me. The game felt less engaging at times as a result, and because of this, I think that made the story, and even MODOK himself, feel a little weaker just by association. I think Marvel's Avengers needed a bit more variety to break up some of the monotony within it. It didn't have enough to keep you fully engaged throughout. The story was good, but the gameplay and repetitive enemy types, even if AIM felt a lot more fleshed out, like its own character, just held it down in a few areas. Add to the fact that you don't have all the Avengers at your disposal until the late hours of the game, and yeah, it can be a drag to get through at certain points. Definitely a slow burn. I think Marvel's Avengers would have also benefited from a few more villains thrown into the mix to crank up the excitement when things slowed down or the main narrative was in a bit of a dip. The villains roster in this game was very unimpressive to me. Yeah, you had MODOK, he was good, but all you get aside from him is Taskmaster at the beginning and Abomination briefly with the Hulk. That's it. You go to the bosses page and it looks barren as fuck, especially compared to many superhero games in recent memory. Mind you, there are several undiscovered bosses below the ones you fight in the campaign, maybe ones that will be added in future DLC or something that you'll have to pay for, but the fact that the base experience offers so little is kind of pathetic, let's be honest. So overall, I found my time with Marvel's Avengers to be very conflicting. On one hand, I found the main campaign to be a lot of fun. The story was pretty good, despite its flaws. The depictions of MODOK and Kamala Khan were definitely the game's highlights, and the combat, while repetitive and a bit button mashy at times, was really entertaining. However, I think it gets a little too monotonous for its own good. Whether that be because of the gameplay itself, the heavy focus on aim, or the fact that there aren't a whole lot of villains to help break it all up. You be the judge. It could be a combination of any and all of those things I mentioned. The campaign is rather short, and once it's done, you find yourself with a rather pointless experience after that. You could grind, beating all the challenges, maxing out your characters and unlocking all their costumes, but since you can't replay the story unless you delete your save file, there really isn't much incentive to do all of that. I feel it's a waste of time. If Crystal Dynamics could fix some of these issues, release a patch that allows for multiple save files and crossover of costumes since they are just cosmetic, New Game Plus even, then I think they might have something here. Even if they release some DLC with more playable characters or story add-ons featuring more villains. But as it stands, Avengers is very bare-boned. There isn't enough content here to make everything feel worthwhile. I hate to say it. By the time you guys see this video, when I have it scheduled in October, maybe there would have been some patches that addressed many of the problems I have with this game, and I hope that's the case, but realize this review is mainly focusing on the game at launch. A AAA title like this one shouldn't have needed this much retooling in order to become something it should have been at the start. I don't care how good Marvel's Avengers may or may not be by the time this review comes out. The fact that it wasn't what it should have been from day one, and most likely, the game will need paid DLC to become even better, is how I'm going to remember it. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Performance-wise, Marvel's Avengers is a bit of a mess. Frame rate issues, the odd screen tearing, texture popping, countless glitches, it even crashed on me a few times throughout my playthrough, which is always frustrating. I get a sense that Crystal Dynamics were in over their heads a little bit with this game, that they ran out of time or money. It just doesn't feel finished. Maybe it was just too ambitious for them to take on, or they had a great concept, but all the pieces just didn't match up the way they intended. Who knows?
As the game is right now, it's very unpolished and needs a lot of work before I could recommend it to anybody. The main campaign is good, the story is fun, definitely worth checking out and experiencing for yourself, but it's not long enough or compelling enough throughout for it to be worth the full price of a game, not even close. I think there are countless other Marvel games out there that accomplish a lot more than this game does, even ones much older than it. Marvel's Avengers has a lot of potential, but unless some of its major issues are fixed, then I don't know if I would call it must-play material. This has been Nerdgasm. I want to thank everyone for watching this game review. A lot of work goes into making these kinds of videos, more than you might realize. If you enjoyed it, I ask that you please subscribe to the channel, share the video to anyone you feel might like it too, and help support my content over on Patreon.com if you can. I have monthly polls that determine which comics and video games I analyze on YouTube, and all you have to do to participate in them is become a patron by joining any of my tiers. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.